Hello, good morning, welcome to St Mary's Halesworth. It's 8 o'clock on Saturday the 27th of January, reading Common Worship Daily Prayer from the Church of England. You'll find the words at the Church of England's website, Aremus Daily Prayer, downloadable as app for Apple Android device, in the book Common Worship Daily Prayer, in the morning evening prayer during the seasons section, morning prayer epiphany season. You're welcome to join me in the building, 8 and 6, Tuesday to Saturday, by Zoom, coach on the Blythe Church's website and Facebook page, we're live streaming on Facebook and the audio will appear on my Dominic Doble YouTube channel presently. <clears throat> o Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Your light springs up for the righteous and all the peoples have seen your glory. Blessed are you, sovereign God, King of the nations, to you be praise and glory forever. From the rising of the sun to its setting, your name is proclaimed in all the world. As the sun of righteousness dawns in our hearts, anoint our lips with the seal of your spirit, that we may witness to your gospel and sing your praise in all the earth. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. A song of joy, Psalm 100. May be joyful in the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. <clears throat> know that the Lord is God. It is he that has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. For the Lord is gracious, his steadfast love is everlasting. And his faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, <clears throat> as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, so God set our hearts on fire with love for you now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> the appointed psalm this morning is number 68. You'll find it at the back of the book, Psalm 68. Sing to God, sing praises to his name. Let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Let those that hate him flee before him. As the smoke vanishes, so may they vanish away as wax melts at the fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. Let them make merry with gladness. Sing to God, sing praises to his name. Exalt him who rides on the clouds. The Lord is his name, rejoice before him. Father of the fatherless, defender of widows, God in his holy habitation. God gives the solitary a home and brings forth prisoners to songs of welcome. But the rebellious inhabit a burning desert. O God, when you went forth before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, the earth shook and the heavens dropped down rain at the presence of God, the Lord of Sinai, at the presence of God, the God of Israel. <clears throat> you went, sent down a gracious rain, O God. You refreshed your inheritance when it was weary. Your people came to dwell there. In your goodness, O God, you provide for the poor. The Lord gave the word. Great was the company of women who bore the tidings. Kings and their armies, they flee, they flee and women at home are dividing the spoil. Though you stayed among the sheepfolds, see now a dove's wings covered with silver and its feathers with green gold. When the Almighty scattered the kings, it was like snowflakes falling on Zaman. Ye mighty mountain, great mountain of Bashan, you towering mountain, great mountain of Bashan, why look with many, with every, why look with envy, you towering mountains, at the mount which God has desired for his dwelling, the place where the Lord will dwell for ever. The chariots of God are twice ten thousand, even thousands upon thousands. The Lord is among them, the Lord of Sinai in holy power. <clears throat> you have gone up on high and led captivity captive. You have received tribute even from those who rebelled, that you may reign as Lord and God. Blessed be the Lord who bears our burdens day by day, for God is our salvation. 
God is for us the God of our salvation. God is the Lord who can deliver from death. God will smite the head of his enemies, the hairy scalp of those who walk in wickedness. The Lord has said from the heights of Bashan, from the depths of the sea will I bring them back, till you dip your foot in blood, and the tongue of your dogs has a taste of your enemies. We see your solemn processions, O God, your processions into the sanctuary, my God and my King. The singers go before, the musicians follow after, in the midst of maidens playing on timbrels. Your companies bless your God. Bless the Lord you that are of the font, fount of Israel. At the head there is Benjamin, least of the tribes, the princes of Judah and joyful company, the princes of Zebulun and Naphtali. Send forth your strength, O God. Establish, O God, what you have wrought in us. For your temple's sake in Jerusalem, kings shall bring their gifts to you. Drive back with your word the wild beasts of the reeds, the herd of the bull like the brutish hordes. Trample down those who lust after silver, Scatter the peoples that delight in war. Vessels of bronze shall be brought from Egypt. Ethiopia will stretch out her hands to God. <clears throat> Sing to God, you kingdoms of the earth. Make music in praise of the Lord. He rides on the ancient heaven of heavens and sends forth his voice, a mighty voice. Ascribe power to God, whose splendour is over Israel, whose power is above the clouds. How terrible is God in his holy sanctuary, the God of Israel who gives power and strength to his people. Blessed be God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Sing to God, sing praise to his name. Scrolling past our first reading to the Song of the New Jerusalem, turning in our books to morning prayer, Epiphany season. <coughs> Above you the Holy One arises, and above you God's glory appears. Rise, shine out, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord is rising upon you. Though night still covers the earth, and darkness the peoples, above you the Holy One arises, and above you God's glory appears. The nations will come to your light, and kings to your dawning brightness. Your gates will lie open continually, shut neither by day nor by night. The sound of violence shall be heard no longer in your land, all ruin and devastation within your borders. You will call your walls of salvation and your gates praise. No more will the sun give you daylight, nor moonlight shine upon you. But the Lord will be your everlasting light. Your God will be your splendour. For you shall be called the city of God, the dwelling of the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was at the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Above you the Holy One arises, and above you God's glory appears. <clears throat> so our first Bible reading is Genesis 17 from 1 to 22. Genesis opens the Hebrew Scriptures, so if you've got a Bible with both covenants in it and you're following books, turn to the beginning and you'll find Genesis. Within Genesis, large number 17 in the margin at the head of the paragraph, chapter 17. And within chapter 17 we're reading the first 22 verses and the verse numbers are the small numbers in the text. Genesis 17 from 1. When Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said to him, I am God Almighty, walk before me and be blameless, and I will make my covenant between me and you and will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abraham fell on his face and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you, you shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abraham, but your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, I will make nations of you and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you and I will give to you and to your offspring after you the land where you are now an alien all the land of Canaan for a perpetual holding and I will be their God. God said to Abraham as for you you shall keep my covenant, you and your offspring after you throughout their generations this is my covenant which you shall keep between me and you and your offspring after you Every male among you shall be circumcised. You shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskins, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and you. <clears throat> Throughout your generations, every male among you shall be circumcised when he is eight days old, including the slave born in your house, and the one bought with your money from any foreigner who is not of your offspring. Both the slave born in your house and the one bought with your money must be circumcised. So shall my covenant be in your flesh an everlasting covenant. Any uncircumcised male who is not circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin shall be cut off from his people. He has broken my covenant. God said to Abraham, As for Sarah, your wife, you shall not call her Sarah, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her, and moreover, I will give you a son by her. 
I will bless her, and she shall give rise to nations. Kings of people shall come from her. Then Abraham fell on his face and laughed and said to himself, Can a child be born to a man who is a hundred years old? Can Sarah, who is ninety years old, bear a child? <coughs> Abraham said to God, Oh, that Ishmael might live in your sight. God said, No, but your wife Sarah shall bear you a son, and you shall name him Isaac. I will establish my covenant with him as an everlasting covenant for his offspring after him. As for Ishmael, I have heard you. I will bless him and make him fruitful and exceedingly numerous. You shall be the father of twelve princes, and I will make him a great nation. But my covenant I will establish with Isaac, whom Sarah shall bear to you at this season next year. And when he had finished talking with him, God went up from Abraham. <coughs> or Abraham, as I would more normally say, but we've been talking about Abraham for the last couple of readings. <coughs> So this is a continuation of this difficulty that we started to encounter yesterday, where Abraham had been told by God that he was going to be a father of nations, but he was old, his wife was old, and um, they'd obviously been trying. His wife gave him her slave, he had a child by the slave, and then she was even more jealous um, and misused, abused the slave, the slave ran away. But God talked to the slave, uh, not to him, not to Abraham or Sarai, <coughs> and now we have God talking to Abraham and Sarai. And uh, the promise of land and numerous children was given before um, this, before Ishmael was born. So he's been promised the same land and uh, numerous children. <coughs> Abraham still favours Ishmael. At this point, they haven't had Isaac, the son uh, of the covenant. So this is God uh, having uh, setting up the covenant with Abraham. So we've had Noah setting up the covenant with uh, Noah, saying he will no longer destroy all um, land living creatures and we had this symbol of the rainbow and uh, no one anywhere is supposed to kill anybody and if they do they're supposed to be brought to justice and have their own lives taken from them that's an archaic for all humanity all humans are supposed to be um, decent human beings each toward the other but here there is a specificity now of uh, a, a um, sacrament just for uh, god's people israel <clears throat> and this is the circumcision it's a sign uh, it might have been cultural and it might have been appropriated by the writers of this, maybe at the time of um, the exile from Babylon, maybe been earlier. Some nations do circumcise, some don't. Usually it's cultural with religious overtones, but here it's written in and so for Jews who would believe this um, uh, and would follow this would say it's a, a religious sign and symbol, one way or the other. <coughs> um, the circumcision, the force with the male penis, is the physical sign um, of which humans can sort of do to themselves, voluntary, involuntary, I guess, unless they're a slave, um, to demonstrate their belief that God will provide. Uh, and it's a very um, particular way because the children will come through the interaction of that organ with another. And uh, so it's not us providing for ourselves. It's like taking the day off one day a week. Uh, and yet we need to be fed. We need to plant our food. We need to um, harvest our produce. But we rely on God helping us do what we need to in the remainder of the week, earning our living, etc. So it's a demonstration of trust and faith, also acceptance of pain, um, and whether we should or whether we shouldn't do it, thinking of a female genital mutilation, which is again, religious cultural practice. Um, I guess that's for us to, to decide. But what's challenging here is the last paragraph, already there's this discussion, are Arabs, are Jews the ones that should inherit the land? Do both either have a right? And uh, Abraham, Abraham actually argues for Ishmael. Ish Isaac hasn't been born yet. And um, God reiterates the promise that he'll be exceedingly numerous. And, of, and it will be made of him that he is a great nation. So um, the troubles in the Middle East are not recent. <coughs> Turn to my second reading, Matthew 27 from 1 to 10. Like Genesis opening the Hebrew scriptures, Matthew opens the Greek, two thirds of the way through your Bible, if you've got both covenants there, open and move towards the back, you should find Matthew, <coughs> within the Gospel of Matthew, we're looking for chapter 27, large number in the margin again, and within the text, the small numbers, we're starting at the beginning of 27, with verse 1, and going on to 10, Matthew 27. Scroll on to it online. When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people conferred together against Jesus in order to bring about his death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. When Judas the betrayer saw that Jesus was condemned, he repented and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders. 
And he said, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. But they said, what is that to us? See to it yourself. Throwing down the pieces of silver in the temple, he departed and he went and hanged himself. But the chief priests, taking the pieces of silver, said, it is not lawful to put them into the treasury since they are blood money. After conferring together, they used them to buy the potter's field as a place to bury foreigners. For this reason, that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah, and they took the thirty pieces of silver, the price of the one on whom a price had been set, on whom some of the people of Israel had set a price, and they gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord commanded me. <coughs> so the chief priests and the elders of the people have to find out a way of getting Rome to put Jesus to death, because under the uh, peace of Rome... Rome reserved the right for capital punishment, and so Jews, if they put people to death, did it by stoning, so no one individual was liable for the death, because it would be difficult to tell which stone it was that actually um, <coughs> brought about um, the cessation of life in the target or victim. Excuse me. Uh, so they try and work out what evidence they can gather that would be enough to have Rome put him to death. Um, and then Jesus, uh, Judah, Judas, when he sees Jesus, uh, there's probably um, a reason why those words are so similar. Um, Judas, when he sees that Jesus is condemned to death, um, changes his mind, tries to give the money back um, and then kills himself. That's interesting because we might have assumed that Judas knew Jesus was going to be put to death if he betrayed him. Um, we might have assumed that Judas thought that Jesus was going to um, step up and begin a, re a revolution in that um, peaceful, quiet place. So he could have done away with a few guards. Then other people in the city would have got to know of it. And then there would have been an uprising <coughs> and each in their own area did what they needed to do to take back the country from Rome. Um, but that didn't happen. He tries to give the money back and then the temple authorities won't take it but they buy a field for foreigners. So even in the mess and muddle of Jesus' death, there is provision for foreigners, albeit begrudgingly, using tainted money. <clears throat> but it demonstrates our hypocrisy is religious sometimes will accept and do something that is unacceptable, that isn't good morally, <clears throat> um, but think nothing of it, and then something that's relatively minor, so they're aiming to put somebody to death in the passage that we had today um, who is innocent and they think that's God's will and that that's right. But on the other hand, they're not ready to accept a donation um, because, I don't know, it's come from the National Lottery, whatever it might be. Um, so it was ever thus. And uh, we think that we've got everything sorted. We think that we're all nice and on an even keel and we know what's right and what's wrong. Um, but do we really um, thank God that God is wise, that God is gracious, that God is forgiving. To the responsory back in morning prayer, uh, Epiphany. O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness, let the whole earth tremble before him. Tell it out among the nations that the Lord is king. O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Tell out his salvation from day to day, let the whole earth tremble before him. Declare his glory among the nations and his wonders among all peoples. O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness, let the whole earth tremble before him. The Song of Zechariah. This is the Christ, the chosen of God, the one who will bring healing to the nations. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, <coughs> to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. This is the Christ, the Chosen of God, the one who will bring healing to the nations. <clears throat> the 
source the Sabbath, heir of peace, comforter, advocate. Three in one, one in three. We thank you for bringing us to the beginning of this new day. And uh, <coughs> we thank you that we can choose to submit to your instruction, that Jewish instruction, Jewish people to take the Saturday as a day of rest, Sabbath. In the Middle East, you'll find the Muslims taking Friday off, the Jews taking Saturday and the Christians taking Sunday. So it depends which corner shop you go to, it depends on what day of the week it is. But it was a sign for all that they believed that God would provide. You can read it in the Exodus story where they didn't collect the manna however metaphorical, allegorical or factual you want to see that story as being on that day. So we choose to rest and therefore we choose not to plough and harvest to the edges of our field. We choose not to industrialise our food production that we can make the most out of selling the cheapest and destroying as much nature and wildlife credibility in other cultures and uh, economies as we do it. We choose not to take land from people that we might continue to burn gas and oil or transport commodities um, through channels to be built on land that was otherwise theirs to live on. We can hold lightly to these things that we ought to be giving up on and sharing with other creatures and people with whom we uh, share this little lump of rock hurtling through space that we might live on it for a few more decades yet than we might otherwise be able to if we boil our heads through our selfishness and our greed and our lust. So we pray for those who are being damaged today by that greed, by that arrogance, by that violence, by the takers and the privileged. And uh, where we are able, we side with them. And uh, we pray that they will have rest and peace and security and sanctuary and hope, retaining their culture, their legal rights to their land <coughs> and... Uh, be able to enjoy the beauty of uh, harvesting from and experiencing living amongst nature. <clears throat> we pray for your grace and your mercy to grant peace in our day. Prayers from World Council of Churches, Cyprus, Greece and Turkey. We've got a morning prayer and a prayer to Christ. Our spirit seeks you in the early dawn, O God, for your commandments are light. Teach us master your righteousness and make us worthy to follow your commandments with all our strength. Take away from our hearts every darkness. Grant us the son of righteousness and protect our lives from any bad influence with the seal of your most holy spirit. Direct our steps to the way of peace and grant to us that this present morning may be peaceful, so that we may send up the morning hymns to you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, the only God, who is more than without beginning and creator of all. Prayer to Christ, Christ our God, who at all times and in every hour are worshipped and glorified in heaven and on earth, long-suffering, generous in mercy, and rich in compassion, loving to the righteous and merciful to the sinner. You call all to salvation through the promise of blessings to come. Lord, in this hour, accept our prayers and direct our lives in the way of your commandments. Sanctify our souls, purify our bodies, correct our thoughts, cleanse our minds, and deliver us from all affliction, evil, and distress. Encompass us with your holy angels, so that guided and guarded by their company we may reach the unity of faith and in the knowledge of your unapproachable glory. For you are blessed unto the sign unto the ages of ages. Amen. <coughs> Christian Action Research and Education. It's Holocaust Memorial Day. We remember today in our world, so broken and scarred by conflict and oppression, the six million Jews murdered during the Holocaust, alongside millions killed under Nazi persecution of other groups and the genocides in Cambodia, Rwanda, Bosnia, Darfur, and the Middle East today. May we learn our lessons and live right. <clears throat> May God, Allah, be merciful. Turning to Green Christian. Today is day gathering Green Christian Wave Life companions in London who want to put, want to who want to present, I think, I don't know whether that's millennial speak, who want to out their faith in a deeper and more structured way. 
um, present, live out their faith, don't know, maybe it's just a, a typo, uh, in a deep and structured way based on four disciplines. These disciplines are daily prayer and devotions, living gently on the earth, public witness and encouragement of each other. Sounds like the standard uh, Christian life to me, but um, if that's a particular um, way of doing it, um, then all strength to them. <coughs> Five marks of mission which the Anglican Communion uphold, include uh, uh, engagement with and uh, championing of the environment. Pope Francis' prayer for creation includes the lines, we thank you for being with us each day, encourage us, we pray in our struggle for justice, love and peace. We benefit on Saturdays, we pray for our elected representatives, and so we do, giving thanks for um, the new energy and uh, unity, vitality, optimism, ambition of the town council, here. We thank you for the relations that they have with district and county. We pray they will continue to grow and improve. And we thank you for um, our closest reaction, interaction with the district is the fact they look after some of our churchyards, for our closed churchyards. We thank you for that. And uh, we pray too for our MP, <coughs> current and uh, potential future um, MP. We pray that they all will make decisions based on um, analysis on uh, the needs of the planet and the people, past, present, future. <coughs> that uh, decision will not be made just to favour the privileged or themselves or the few, but that they will be recognised as being sort of right, the right decision, honest, moral, perhaps even, if we can go that far, <coughs> and that they will be supported and sustained by the communities that they serve. Um, they balance the requirements to... Um, follow the party line, follow their own faith, their own convictions, and also the, the requests of their um, constituents. It's a tough call, difficult life, but I would pray that we as a nation will be restored to being one of honour, virtue, welcome, I'm going to say mediocrity, but that's not quite what I mean, of equanimity perhaps is a better, I just read a quote from somebody in the Financial Times the other day, and uh, may that be us again. Thank you for our people looking after our churches. Um, on Saturdays we pray, Saturday mornings we pray for our ministers. So I pray your blessing on <coughs> Janet, Eileen, Malcolm, Jason, Veronica. Uh, I think that's us as elders. Readers, Diana, Wynne, Veronica, Jim, Associate Priests, Alison Vic, David, Jonathan, Desmond, Assistant Curate, Linda, Ginny Team Vicar, me as Team Rector. We thank you for our good relations, we thank you for our creativity, we thank you for our call and our faith to this place. Thank you for the way we are able to work together and encourage each other. We thank you, I thank you, that you have drawn more in um, in the last year or two. And uh, we pray for continued growth and we pray also that we as parishes will be able to engage with our communities such that we do raise enough through parish giving scheme and other revenue streams of um, wealthy and generous donors to maintain at least two full-time paid clergy in this place. Um, as we look ahead, even as and when uh, Ginny and I may step down, we pray that you will be um, express your generosity as God to and through us in our communities by enabling that to happen. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank 
Collect for Epiphany, Almighty God, in Christ you make all things new, transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace, and in the renewal of our lives make known your heavenly glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Believing the promises of God as our Saviour taught us, so we pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but to deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May Christ, who sends us to the nations, give us the power of his Spirit. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Goodbye to those joining us on Facebook and YouTube.